Well, hi guys, it's me, Alex, founder of this patch training center. And of course, that sassy, pushy, direct instructor and pro dispatcher on everyday basics. Well, today I am actually doing topic which you've been hearing probably for many years from me. Maybe in my classes, you've been doing homeworks with setups, but this is actually ABCs of how to become a pro dispatcher. Why am I doing this? Because remember those, uh, actually the first tries when I just opened the YouTube video, well, I was not as good as I am right now because we all improve, right? You polish your skills, you get a better camera, you have a better sound, plus things are changing. Even comparing to two years ago, the carrier setup, initial setup between your future carrier and broker actually have been changed. And why? Because of the innovations. I am trying to actually make sure that I monitor my uh, Facebook because I would like to see comments. Again, if you are on Facebook, I usually do not see your name. I only see people from YouTube and I can post their questions uh, while we're going live. But let's go back to basics. If you were watching this short video a few days ago, we went through knowing what is intrastate, interstate, active MC, USDOT number. What does it mean to be a carrier, carrier for hire, for actually property, for certain type of compensation, right? So we know we are authorized motor carrier for hire, except household goods. We are not a moving company. Moving company also has to apply for a 30. We guys figure out that we actually having at least, what, eight different authorities, but most of you guys are gonna be working with motor carrier for hire for property. In this case, remember property, this is actually your cargo, your commodities, and we have different type of commodities. We also understand what it means to have just an MC number and have an active MC number. Two steps, mandatory, insurance primary liability, to activate MC is 750,000 to actually book any load. Well, you need that whooping $1 million. Yes, yes, yes. For each um, driver, you need to make sure for each load, you have that coverage for $1 million. That's why trucking is not that cheap. And this is only one insurance. Besides that, you guys remember in my classes, we go through all the coverages. Well, you need to cover that cargo. So you will need the cargo coverage. You need to protect your own equipment. So you will need to get that physical coverage. It depends how much your equipment costs. If you bought that brand new Volvo or brand new Freightliner last year or year before, well, you probably need to cover it for 200, 220. Good news. Seems like it's a lot of available trucks back on the market. Why? because market sucks and a lot of people cannot afford to stay in trucking. We see a lot of decrease. Some mega carriers, if they had 200 trucks, maybe in summer, in October, they went to 160, 170. And nowadays they are even 270 trucks. Why? Well, because they're making the smart decision. They are making sure that they still keep their company running. And guys, I can tell you this, if you are a big mega carrier and you still at least bring in some profit, you're doing great. If you break in at zero, you're still doing great because most of the companies actually finish in 2023 with negative numbers. Well, hopefully they had some extra accounts during their good years, right? Hopefully they know how to manage their operational cost. And hopefully their dispatch is stepping up because dispatchers are the people who can make profit. Dispatchers are the one who can put you out of the business, but still 
We are not magicians. We cannot control market. And I wish I had some special crystals and I had magical wand. Unfortunately not. I do my best. I try to make sure that my carriers are still running and still not filing bankruptcy. But I wish market would shape up a little bit. The last two weeks, we've seen decrease, right? We were kind of steady in December. We were okay in January, but the last 10 days, you guys see decrease, right? So actually less loads and the prices went down a little bit and the fuel went up. And everybody's asking all the trucking gurus when the market is going to change. What's going to happen? Well, guys, Hopefully again, and this is my personal opinion, well, we have an election year, so I think that things are going to start switching probably in May, June. Well, usually summer is actually shifting market a little bit up, but I don't care if they're going to do the fake shifting of the economy or whatever they have to do, but hopefully we're going to see improvement, but that's not going to be drastic improvement. So do not count then you going back to the market, which was there 2021, 2020. No, we're not going there. Again, it was a special situation. It was COVID. It was supply and demand. We were all shopping like crazy, right? Remember? Toilet paper, extra macaroni and cheese, all the stuff that we got. I still have supply probably for the next two years in my garage. And that's what every American did. So what happened? Well, we were ordering stuff. So we had so much freight coming in. When we had so much freight coming in, well, we needed to move that freight because Walmart, Costco, Aldi, all the food lions, everybody was selling extra product. So they were ordering. They wanted to make their profits. Online shopping went crazy. And that's why everybody got into the truck and everybody wanted to have a piece of that big, big, spicy COVID prices. And some people made money. And hopefully you put some money aside and now you have kind of reality check. So we as a dispatchers, we still need to do our job. So I will be back with you just in a second. And we actually going to learn that finishing that setups, how easy it is. And we're going to see how requirements change for some brokers, which you probably have been working for for a while. And again, I'm concentrating on the new people who come into industry. I'm concentrating on people who are lost because maybe they took some trainings and still don't have a clue how to start dispatching. I am concentrating on people who always looking to improve. So I will be right back and we're going to continue. <laughs> Well, and we are back. I see that we have some followers. Oh, there is my buddy, Storyteller. Well, thank you for actually, he's a guy who guys made some promo videos and we probably have to rehire him back because finally, finally, I am going to put those little crash courses, pre-recorded ones. So thank you for always liking us and actually supporting our mission. His name is Tas. He's from Moldova. And actually, guys, one more time, if you are looking for the guy who, if you need to create some promo for your companies, he's doing a great job. He has so much equipment, so and he's very responsible. So again, you've been seeing some of the projects which we did, and um, I'm very pleased. And he's kind of my uh, little IT guy. I need you back because I do want to finally connect that Apple computer which you've been sitting there. <laughs> 
you would not believe it's still sitting there. I still did not connect everything. So uh, I am more productive. So probably going to give you a call next week and see your schedule. I, it seems like you're a busy guy now, which is good. I wish you lots of success. So what do we learn from this, guys? We learn that you have to always maintain a good, loyal relationships. You have to always like support other people's missions because you know what? Sometimes you think, well, that little like might not do much. But you know what? That little like can help the channels grow and we almost to 22,000. That little like can bring somebody to the class, a person can learn. That little like, maybe, or share can give somebody the free class because we're always on the mission to change trucking for the better. Let's see another um, another uh, viewer, Fa- uh, Felix, and he's saying that he's been dispatching for eight years and it's been the best. I built my home from dispatching and everything I have achieved from dispatching. I learned my way, but can definitely recommend you to anyone. The way I've seen you teach, it's the best. Congrats. Well, thank you, Felix. Uh, Felix, Felix. Sorry, Felix, probably. Sorry, sometimes I'm terrible with the names. Uh, hopefully, you'll forgive me, but it's... Um, it's very nice to see that person who never took the classes still supports our channel. And he is actually proving to us that if you put your mind into it, if you learn, if you stick to your goals, you can achieve success. Yes, this passion is not going anywhere. And especially if you becoming a pro dispatcher. So let's start and let's actually improve our skills especially for students who just took my class in December, October, November, and who is in my February class and for students in April class. This is a must. From you, I demand those comments. From you, I demand those questions. And from you, I demand the shares because I do have all the rights. You are the ones who are going to change trucking for the better. And I am your instructor who is going way above my mission. That's why we are doing this because I've seen little confusion in homework. I've been checking the homework this um, uh, this few days and I want to make sure that you guys understand. So onboarding. We used to get, we used to get guys PDFs, right? So let me open some and I can add it to the screen. Hopefully you guys see Let me make it bigger. So what are those PDFs? It used to be setups. Why? Because we did not really have innovations with all these third parties, fancy links here, click, 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 and setup done in 30 minutes, one minute. So we used to receive actually PDFs. I am giving you an example. This is England Logistics. And the process was you had to complete your PDF. You had to send it back. You had to make sure that you know what you're doing and also exchange your paperwork, your carrier setup, right? So let's just look. For example, England Logistics, they want to make sure that you finish this carrier setup. They want to make sure that carrier form is uh, attached. Your MC is uh, actually sent to them. Proof of authority, right? Official proof of authority. The letter which you get when you finally get that insurance and BOC3. When you are an active carrier, that's the day where you start counting. One day in the business, two days in the business, three days in the business. So this is beginning of your big dreams in trucking, that active MC. Also, they need to make sure that you give them certificate of insurance, COI, and we are talking about master certificate. They want to make sure that you have all these limits. And of course, look at this, that $1 million is a must just for liability. If you decide to go to California, they want to make sure that you sign their CARB uh, attachment. And of course, you need to sign copy of their brokerage agreement which is attached if you do not have factoring you need to sign up for their payment option actually in one logistics also have their factoring or you can do quick pay whatever is the situation but this would be the steps 
to get set up the old way, right? The PDF. And then, guys, I'm not going to scroll down. They are telling you, well, we're also using the third party for our certificate holders. And who do we see now? We see Azure Assist. So since then, Azure Assist also step up. And now they are offering so many setups for brokers via link. So usually you are not actually getting PDF anymore. You're going to receive link from the third party. In this case, this is Azure Assist. And you will answer all of this, but it's not going to be this format. It's going to be online onboarding um, setup, right? But I just want you to show you how it used to be before, a few years ago, because sometimes you still guys have an option to do PDF. But probably, I don't know, maybe only 5-7% of people are still using PDF. You were supposed to put the signature owner of the company, person who is completing this form, and let's go back one more time. You are as a dispatcher. Legally, you're not putting your name there. You are doing this on the behalf of your carrier. So there is going to be a president, let's say, of uh, Felix Transportation or maybe manager, maybe vice president, but it's never ever dispatcher. So make sure you do not make that mistake so you do not have to redo it. The phone numbers, the emails, everything is going to be from your carrier. I don't care if you are dispatch service. You will not put your email. You're going to do it correctly. You're going to make sure that even if you're done set up today and tomorrow you're not working for this carrier, he is not going to feel hostage and he's still going to actually receive rate confirmations and all the links. Please promise me that. So when you do set up, you're always going to use carrier's information, their email, their phone. You can add yourself as a dispatch service if you want to do that, okay? So let's continue. So this was England Logistics, right? They wanted all these questions. And it's so funny because England Logistics, look, they're asking you, well, do you have a factor? And yes or no. And they even asking you expiration if you were doing by PDF. Why do they do that? Because they are good in their sales. The moment you're going to click, yes, I have factoring. And let's say you put that it's RTS and my expiration is in uh, May. Of course, they're going to start calling you because, as I told you, England has their own factoring. Same with a fuel card. England Logistics has fuel cards. Same with also national tire accounts. So my point is that every setup, every broker, their broker agreement is going to be different. Their requirements are going to be different. But you as a dispatcher, you just need to understand what they are really asking you, right? So this would be their setup via PDF. See, you have to fill out W9. Now it's broker carrier agreement. So now you're agreeing to do business with England Logistics business between whom? Between your carrier and England Logistics. What kind of business? Well, business of moving freight from A to B. You are carrier for hire. So you're not going to do it for free, right? Hopefully you guys still making money. So you're going to charge them. That's why we have rate confirmation, another contract. But the rate confirmation, this is a contract exactly for that load, right? Rate confirmation is actually has all the stipulation exactly for that load. And it tells you what time are you picking up? When are you going to be delivering? What kind of equipment do you need? If your driver has to do anything, uh, PO numbers, BOL numbers, maybe special delivery appointments, confirmation for pickup anything to do exactly for the load that you are booking for today or tomorrow, exactly for drive-in, exactly for reefer, exactly for Conestoga, anything that has to do with that one moment. Is that still a contract? 
yes, that is still a legal contract. And you agree to certain things as a dispatcher. But that contract is only valid to that moment. The difference between setting up with England Logistics or TQL or Coyote as a broker that we actually start in a relationship so we can do those loads in the future. How often are we going to do it? Well, we usually do it once and then we might update some information and exactly we are actually uh, going to talk about it. What are we updating and how often? So let's look, for example, at TQL, right? In, in my homework in a class, you guys still doing the PDF. Why? Because I actually want to make sure that you understand. Again, the TQL tells us, well, to set up with us, you need to do the steps. You need to sign this agreement. You need to give us certificate of insurance. We need your W-9. We need the workers' compensation if this is something that requires by your state proof of your authority. We need to make sure that if you have factoring, then we need the NOA. If you do not have factoring, then you should choose how would you like to get paid. If you are hazmat, we need the safety permit anything else and of course you need to have to sign up some um other paperwork if you do in hazmat loads okay so that's how pdf version looked right and that's kind of gone because now what's going on now well now you guys going to tql online look at this you can go to tql right directly to tql you can actually go to truck stop and we're going to talk about the biggest four parties which provide this as a service but let's go back to just tql so if you go to tql you guys find here carrier get started and it's gonna take you right here and they are telling you well for you to get set up actually you will need to make sure that you have active MC, MX, if you are Mexico, if you have Mexico authority, and DOT number. So if you are intrastate or interstate carrier and you do have active authority with that insurance and that BOC3, if you have Mexico authority or Canadian authority, well, you can start this process, right? Then you need to make sure you review all the information. You have to finish their preferred lanes and carrier capabilities. You have to electronically sign W9 on behalf of your carrier. They need to provide a certificate of insurance from your agent or the third party. In this case, if this link came from RMIS, then it's already on file. If you go directly to TQL, then you will provide that. You need to sign carrier agreement. And if you are willing to be a project of project 44, you need to complete that registration. So look at this, RMIS. So RMIS, Registry Monitoring System, is a third party. Who actually owns RMIS now? Truck Stop. They bought them a few years ago, and now they're providing that setup. So look, if we click right here, if you are on TQL and you guys are gonna click here, you can go to the next step. And here you will choose, are you interstate, hauling across the line states, are you interstate, or if you are Canadian authority. So if you put interstate, well, you will need to put your MC, DOT. The moment you put it here, it's gonna pull up this information about you. So. This is very easy, right? You're going to answer all of that and you guys are going to get set up with TQL. Look, it's bright and sunny today, huh? Let's see the questions before we continue. Uh, did you say we as a dispatcher are not to sign broker carrier agreement? No, you're not going to put uh your name and your last name on that agreement this is not your company you providing service you're doing it on behalf of your carrier 
So if I am the owner of trucking company, me, Alex, owning, let's say, Alex Transportation, and I hired you as a dispatcher, I am giving you permission to do setup process on my behalf, but with my signature, that's why as a dispatch service, as a dispatcher, you're always going to have my signature or prove as electronic signature, but it's not going to be you, you, and you. This is not your company. Today, you're working for me. Tomorrow, I find somebody else. So plus, it's not your company. This is a legal document. And if something goes wrong, well, who is going to go to court, you or me? Me, because this is my company. If so, we have accidents, if uh, claims are involved, well, we're going back to this original broker carrier agreement. So how can you make that decision? Me as an owner, I am giving you an um, okay to do this on behalf of my company. Hopefully this is clear, guys. And I've been telling this all the time, right? But thanks you for asking questions. Please ask me questions because I like when we do have interactive session. Unfortunately, I'm going to give you guys one more promo because I need to close this sunny, sunny window of mine. I did not really think that it's going to be this bra. <music> So let's go back and let's actually answer the question, what are those four third-party services, the biggest one? We have other ones, but let's talk about biggest one. So let's start with a truck stop, right? RMIS. So they provide onboarding with the top brokers and they promise that they make it fast and easy to connect and actually it is easy. Even in my classes, when we guys do the real setup, you see, usually if I don't have to explain something, it takes probably 60 seconds, 30 seconds. Of course, in a class, we spend two, three minutes because I'm trying to answer the difference between the questions. Uh, but usually, guys, the setup is not going to take you more than two minutes. Okay. So look at this. They're already telling you that if you're a carrier, if you're a brand new dispatcher, you can go here and you can start setting up uh, with these companies. And it's not just these companies that RMIS represents. We're going to go back there. So number one, not number one by the volume, but the one I started today with is RMIS. Actually, RMIS have been in business for a long, long time. And at some point, Truck Stop was trying to be their competitor, right? And they were trying to create their own onboarding platform and they did not really succeed. So they made a wise decision. They decided and they bought RMIS. And now this is a part of the Truck Stop uh, family, right? Let's call it it's their little sister company, right? And now they're doing a really good job. So, truck stop. Let's go back to that. And remember, guys, we are still affiliates with the truck stop. And to have the access to the truck stop load board, unfortunately, you need to have active MC or USDOT. They used to give access to the dispatchers, but then they took it away due to the scams, double brokering, complaining from the brokers. So now they did not do that option. If you grandfather that from long, long time ago, you still have it. But as a new dispatcher, as an independent dispatcher, you cannot have access to truck stop load boards. But you're going to be using their system with setting up your future carrier, right? You're going to be getting the knowledge what is RMIS, registry monitoring insurance system, how to update information if you have any problems. So please go to that truck stop and educate yourself. They have lots and lots of articles. And uh, that's what you need to do, guys. 
You cannot just listen to me telling you or other people. You need to go and start reading all the publications that's been posted by uh, uh, leaders in the industry. And now we are talking about load board leaders, onboarding leaders, right? They attack guys. If they create the systems, believe it or not, they have so much data and you can improve your knowledge about supply, demand, commodities, seasons, and everything else. But let's go back on the track because you know me, Alex can blah, blah, blah. And sometimes I go and carry away to different direction. Alex, go back. Okay, so. RMIS was number one. Let's go to number two, of course, that onboarding, right? DAT onboarding. Why? Because, well, they already have a load board, right? So they already have clients. So, of course, they do have onboarding facilities. And all of them are promising that it's going to be fast, easy, right? So they also send you the link and you can go and you can finish all of this. So usually as a dispatcher, you can log in to your data onboarding for your carrier, and you can go and see all the brokers, and you can start setting up. Pay attention. If you do have factoring, before you go crazy and set up your carrier with all possible contracts, because it's really easy, it takes you two, three minutes to finish all those contracts because you're already in a system, pay attention to credit of those brokers. Just because they are listed on RMIS, just because they are listed on the debt onboarding, that does not mean they approved by your factoring. So go back to that step, mandatory step as a dispatcher. Always check and see with factoring. Is it approved, right? Is it A, B, or C broker, right? So after you've done this, you can go and set up. So that onboarding is number two, the third party provider to do this service faster. Well, then we have a new guys, right? We have Highway, GoHighway.com. They probably show up last year. Sometimes their system have glitches, but they improving. But now lots of them actually receiving all of this, right? And when you get set up, you can see, well, it's completed. This is completed. This is completed. So now let's see. X, uh, Excel Logistics use, uses them. Direct Connect uses them, Schneider, Visual Pack. For example, Flock Freight, I still did not finish some step. So if I want to get set up with this broker, I just probably need to add some information. So Highway, GoHighway.com, this is another onboarding carrier, right? So, so far, we had three. RMIS on truck stop, DAT onboarding on that platforms, DAT platforms. Now this new highway carrier details. And also we have a last one, which all of you know as what? My carrier, po- my carrier portal. And who owns them? Remember that Assure Assist. And again, what do they do? They tell you that it's going to be easier. You just click, 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 and all the information is verified. So what are they charging for? Well, they're charging brokers for fast paperwork, right? So this is, this is done in minutes. They also promise brokers that they actually check in on the safety of the carrier. Remember, we have four ratings, right? Satisfactory conditional, and satisfactory, and none. All of the brokers are telling you, if you want to work with us, if you want to get set up, you must have two type of ratings, satisfactory or none. None can be tricky. It can be good or bad, but my students actually know how to go to the safer and how to check on actually ratings on all seven different categories, right? Because what do we do in our class? We give you way more information than just 
how to post the truck, and how to ask for more money. That's the last thing you're going to learn. Post the truck, delete the truck, any kindergarten can learn because, guys, this is easy. They might look different, all the load boards, but the logic is the same. Origin of the truck, where you want to go, type of trailer, any comments, what are you looking for? Organized by date, by dead hat, by the weight, by the origin of that hat, by highest rate. So it's very easy. We're not spending time in a class learning how to post the truck or how to spell the states, right? Hopefully, before you sign up for my class, at least you invest some time in learning the abbreviation of the states learning the regions of the USA, understanding the zones that we have in logistics from Z0 to Z10, understanding the time difference. Hopefully you understand the seasons in the USA because this is something that you need to learn on your own. And I do help when I post extra videos and I tell you about this, but I'm not spending my valuable time in a class teaching you the abbreviation of Minnesota or Missouri or Montana or Connecticut, right? We are here to become a pro dispatchers. We are not here kindergartners, right? So one more time, we have four. RMIS, dead on boarding, highway, my assure, right? Now we have, I think, the fifth one. She's trying really hard, my carrier assure, right? So probably she's going to provide that. The lady who says that she's changing trucking for the better, but actually she is slamming slander some new businesses because she gives the ratings only from safer. So if you did not have an inspection on the road, she tells that you're not a good carrier, that your rating is F, which is nonsense. This is so big disconnect between the reality of trucking, the inspection on the road, and if you are good or bad carrier. Sometimes a guy with one truck who've been on the road even for four months is better than some huge mega carrier with unorganized business, with not maintaining the truck. So I always tell that if I would be a broker, and hopefully maybe one day if I get bored, I will become the broker, I would give my loads to small carriers uh, and I will not be paying attention to uh, if they have one or two trucks, but I will be paying attention how they respond to email, how their safety score, it can be one truck, but they still have a good safety. And actually, if this makes sense, their equipment, right? Are they taking care of their equipment? And of course, an attitude. So for me personal, I do believe that small carriers from one to five trucks are doing way better job than companies with 15, 20 trucks. But we're not discussing this right now. What I want to discuss with you guys, let's see the main requirements that brokers nowadays want from brand new carriers. Because for people who've been in business for two, five years, seven years, even a year, it's easier. So what is really changing? I'm going to go back to actually truck stop because I like that. You know what? Let me, let me make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So hopefully you can see bigger. And let's just click on a few of brokers so you can see. Is it easy to be a brand new motor carrier right now? I don't know. Let's check, let's say, Molo Solutions. So if we go to Molo Solutions, look at those cute guys. Well, I guess this is their team. Well, what do you need to have to set up with Molo Solutions? Well, you will need, of course, provide MC number, DOT number. You need to make sure that you give them information about your company. You need to submit the W-9. You will need to complete the carrier profile, read and accept the agreement on behalf of your carrier if you are dispatcher. You need to make sure that you do have coverages. And of course, they are telling you 100000 for cargo, $1 million for after coverage, 
worker compensation if this is mandatory by your state. Of course, if you're already going through RMIS setup, because I guess you can go also to Molo, their official website, and you can probably get set up from there. But they are saying, guys, since we are using RMIS, you already probably have certificate holder on file. You don't have to worry about this because RMIS is actually checking your coverage. They're making sure that it's up to date. That's why we're using RMIS. And they are telling you, well, look at this. You need to have active common or contract authority. So remember the difference between contract uh, authority? Well, the company might have equipment, but they only use this for their own company. For example, US sale mail, right? They also have their trucks. They're anybody who is heavier than 10,000, well, they need to work on their authority. But what they do? They only bring the mail. They don't go to old boards, right? Same, for example, with the UPS or FedEx or maybe some military facilities. They still move that heavy equipment, but they are not doing it for compensation. They are doing just on behalf of their company. So that's a difference between common carrier, us, who do this for a living, who do it for compensation and contract authority, right? So you guys should know that. And the last thing, they say that your safety rating must be satisfactory or not. When you click on the next page, then you will need to again choose. Are you interstate or interstate or if you are Canadian? Then you're going to go to next step and you guys going to answer. So Molo did not really have any requirements for how long you have to be in a business. Well, let's check. I don't know. Let's check on... Um, who are we gonna check? SPI. So let's see SPI. What doesn't doesn't want to go? SPI is not their is not their um partner anymore. Look at the Pepsi logistics. So what is the difference between Molo and Pepsi in this case? Well, most of the things are gonna be the same. But look, Pepsi logistics recently because of all the double brokering of their loads. Well, they make it harder for new people to get set up. First, they are telling you must have come on a contract authority. Broker authority is not permitted. Wow. So remember, we have carriers who have one truck and they also go and apply for brokerage MC. And most of the time, this is a people who actually want to run scams, right? We know that most scams come from California, right? We're not going to name the countries, but we know who is running those scams. So look at this. Pepsi got so tired of scams that they say, if we can see that you apply for also brokerage under the same name and everything, don't even finish this paperwork because you're going to waste your time. We're not going to set you up, right? So let's see what else they're saying. Well, they are saying that you need to have one year of active MC, right? So now what does it tell you? Well, it tells you if you just open company, you have to wait for the full year to even being able to finish this paperwork, right? Okay, what else? They need one DOT inspection. Look at this must be visible updated wire oh my god they could not even spell fmcsa come on Pepsi, you're making all these rules but you cannot spell federal motor carrier safety administration come on guys you need to fix this right you want all these rules you added but you don't know the spelling of our federal administration okay minimum one tractor and one trailer Okay, minimum of no freight guard reports within six months or via carrier 411. Well, something new for people who may be not dispatching. So let's think about this. What is that carrier 411? Hmm? What is that actually? Look at this. I'm getting so excited that. 
I'm start getting hot because me personally, I do believe that this is unfair that freight guard and carrier 411 is one-sided platform who protects brokers. But here's the thing. A lot of times brokers take it personal business into those reports and carrier a lot of times do not have chance to prove that unfortunately that report is not correct because a lot of times brokers also lie. Actually, they the ones who don't make appointments. They the ones who lie about how heavy the load is. So why? Why those systems exist if it's only one-sided? And I've seen so many cases that because of that freight guard or that carrier 411 report, which sometimes is honest, but a lot of times it's actually done in a spike just because broker get pissed, ruining a lots and a lots of carriers, especially brand new carriers. So guys, now you learn that we also have third parties who monitor carriers and who monitor brokers' activities, right? Let's go back to that Pepsi because we're not going to watch all of this uh, uh, questions, but we're just going to go through biggest companies. Okay. So let's say we have it. We don't have no report in the past six months. And actually, we need to make sure that the rating, again, satisfactory or none. You need to sign this agreement. You need to make sure that you agree to track in wire four kites or micro points. So make sure that you understand this for the future business with Pepsi. And look at this. It's going to be minimum charge of $75 per load. And then they're going, of course, for insurance. And insurance as usual. Cargo, 100,000 million after coverage. Plus, they would like to have general liability. So do you see how every broker is different? Okay, pay attention to this. Certificates must be submitted from your insurance agent, right? Not from dispatcher, not from you faking that Adobe PDF, right? But from your insurance or their online system. Okay, this is done. So what else they want? Insurance expiration should be no less than two weeks out. And I love this. I was actually laughing this Saturday in my class, financially stable. Well, how are we going to provide statement to Pepsi that we are financially stable? Well, my question is, is Pepsi financially stable in this economy? Well, probably yes, because... They made sure that America is addicted to older products, right? Everybody's drinking Pepsi and cola products. So probably they are financially stable. But this is kind of a nonsense, really. You want us to prove that we as a carrier are financially stable to do your load. But again, it's their business, their requirements, and you can agree to hold the product, or you can disagree, and then you cannot really get set up with a Pepsi. So everything else is kind of the same. You need to accept the master agreement. Then you need to make sure that you submit your W-9. For Canadians, carriers, they need to upload their W-8-B-E-N and everything what they ask. If you have any other certifications and as a dispatcher, you already know and you should know. If not, please Google. What does it mean smart way? What does it mean minority-owned business, woman-owned business? So you actually need to understand what are they asking you? So simple as that. Go and Google. What is a smart way certification? Who gets it? How do you get it? What is a minority-owned business? What is a woman-owned business, right? Because you are pro-dispatcher. You're not just a person who is filling out the paperwork. In this case, you are answering questions. Again, you're going to go to the next step, and you're going to put the MC DOT, and it's going to tell you, or you qualify or you do not qualify. So this was Pepsi for you. I don't know. Who should we choose? Give me a comment. Which one we should choose? 
Axel Logistics, Bass Bay, Siege Robinson, Coyote, Suntech. Which one would you like to see? Well, we all know the TQL. TQL works with you after you are one day in business. And that's why doesn't matter if some people say, oh my God, TQL sucks. They do not pay for the loads. We don't want to work with them, guys. You are going to be working with a TQL. You're going to be working with Coyote. You're going to be working with a Siege Robinson. Why? Because the reality of the trucking is not that many brokers give you an opportunity to work with them after being one day in business. And actually, let's talk about this. If I would be a broker, right? If I would be a broker, and this is my brokerage, or I am a customer, let's say I make after parts. If I'm looking for the third party PL, if I am a smart business owner, that would be one of my requirements. I want to make sure that carriers who are going to be hauling my expensive, fancy after parts or whatever it is, my furniture, maybe, uh, I don't know, even if it's a dry goods, because it is my business. I want to make sure that I don't have cargo rejections due to what? Due to the transit being late, due to unsafe driving, due to cargo getting stolen because drivers don't want to track uh, or they don't accept micro tracking. I would actually tell the third party that on my shipment, I need at least company who been in business six months at least and i would do that without even feeling bad because i want to make sure that my cargo is delivered i want to make sure my cargo is not get stolen i want to make sure that carrier is not messing up my production uh schedule i want to make sure that my customers are getting it on time because this all these little things are gonna affect how much money I make, how good I am on my service, right? So it's a lot of things involved. So I'm actually surprised when customers do not request that. But again, TQL is a big brokerage. They work with a lot of new businesses. So that's why they have loads, which they can give to the carrier who been in business one day. For me personal, even if you are dispatcher one day, while well, you just starting, it's going to take you a while to become that pro dispatcher. Of course, we have to give a chance for everybody. But in this case, I am thinking as an owner of the business, right? So let's see one more. So I'm asking you, while I'm asking, Kelly Turner is saying, well, you're awesome. I really mean it. You are 100% on hands and real. Okay, so Kelly, you the one who is going to choose. I always look at your videos. This is the first live I caught, and I am charged. The whole house, you are needed in the industry. Okay, Kelly Turner. So who should we who should we look into? We already look at Molo Solutions. We know about TQL. We looked at the Pepsi, so I'm letting you choose because this is an interactive life, right? I want to make sure you guys get involved. And before she's going to answer, because she's probably so excited that she is on the screen, right, Kelly? Kelly Turner is a future star in the trucking industry. So who are we looking at, Kelly? Come on. Multitasking, fast respond is a must for the pro dispatcher. Hopefully you're not driving. So who should we look into? I guess Kelly is not there yet. So let's look at TA services, right? Oh, reload did not work. I don't know. Did TA, did TA decided to go and maybe choose highway carrier because they are cheaper? Let's look at Ryan Transportation. So Ryan Transportation own owns RTS, right? So some of you who don't know this, they are sister companies. So first it was Ryan Transportation. Then of course they made money. They opened their factory and now they are actually, actually doing the fuel carts, factoring, equipment financing. But Ryan Transportation, this is the main 
this was the beginning of all that big, big company. So what do they want? Well, they just want carrier profile. They want to make sure that you sign carrier agreement. They want to make sure that you have uh, insurance broker information or just a simple certificate, which we call master certificate. And of course, look at this. They are trying to sell right away their factory, right? Look, if you work with Orion Transportation, you can have the same day fundings, right? You have free broker credit data, free access, because now what are they advertising? Well, they are advertising that they have their own load board, right? Again, you will need to choose who you are, interstate, interstate, and go to the next setup. So look, you can make a note. TQL, you can work right away with Ryan Transportation. You don't have to wait to be in business for more than one day. Molo Transportation. So look, guys, what you're learning. You can already have three brokers who you're working with. Okay, so I like Coyote Logistics. They give great details concerning their loads. Okay, so let's check on Coyote, right? So let's see. Coyote Logistics, right? Let's make it bigger again. Okay. So what is Coyote Logistics? Well, Coyote Logistics wants the same information, but Coyote Logistics is going to tell you what? That you have to be in business for 30 days. So actually, you have to be in business for 30 days to get set up. You can click right here. And it's going to take you to their Coyote website, right? And here you can get set up. You can also go to their load board. And that's what Brian was referring to. Because kids, when you set up, sorry that I call you kids. I just love all my students. So I feel like I'm a mama hen who is watching after her little chickens, right? And it doesn't matter if you're older or younger than me, you are still all my babies because when I teach you, I try to put half of my soul into you as well and my values and my logical thinking and actually my mission to change trucking for the better. So when I call you kids, that's not in soul. It actually comes from me loving what I do and loving my students. Remember, when we get in setup, a lot of times there's going to be a question. Would you like to get access to Orion load board, to TQL load board, to Coyote load board, to Pepsi load board? And the answer is going to be yes, yes, and yes. Why? Because now you're getting another load board where you can look for the loads. So since Brian was active, let's go and let's just log in really fast to Coyote Load Board so you guys understand what we are talking about. Remember, we have a lot of new people. So now after you get set up with Coyote, after you've been in business for 30 days, you can actually sign up for their load boards, right? And you can look at what's going on here. So let's see. What do we have tomorrow from Chicago, Illinois? You can choose 100 miles radius. Let's make it 50. Let's be more realistic. Destination. Let's not choose destination. We're going to see the highest pain load, right? We're going to look for tomorrow. We can click tomorrow. Equipment type. Brian, what are we looking for? Should we look for when reefer? Flat bad. Look at this. Oh, container and power only. This is only five modes that Coyote actually posts on their website. So I don't know, whatever. Let's do the win because actually, okay, yes, Brian said win. So I read his mind. No, he was just fast. And what he says that he likes that Coyote gives a lots and lots of details. So first, Let's organize, not by the pickup date, but by the logically, as a pro dispatcher, you want to pick up the closest loads to you. So buy origin that hat. And let's choose one of the loads. Well, let's see how good Brian is. 
Chicago to Colorado, Texas, $4.36. Wow, is this the winning load for us? No, no, and no. I don't even want to look at this nonsense, right? Hopefully, Brian agrees. First, what are we going to pick up in Loretto? Loretto, McAllen, those are cities where most likely we have stuff for reefers. We bring produce from Mexico. So no, no, and no. Let's look at another one. Let's look maybe Melrose Park going to... In the middle of the country, Nebraska, I remember I had a student uh, who is probably watching me all the time and who lives in Nebraska. And we learn that Nebraska, you just want to pass by, right? When you go to West Coast, when you go to California, when you go in maybe to other Idaho, but there's not much to get for reload besides what? the cheap feed for animals, and probably that's it. So beautiful state, but not much commodities. So look at this. You even learn in what states to go to and not. But let's say maybe you don't have that much experience, or maybe you believe in that going to North Platte, Nebraska for $1.36 is a great load. But what the Brian referred to, he said, I like Coyote because they give a lot of details. So let's see what de- details they give us. Well, they give us, they calculate for us deadhead. So they tell them that we're going to be 12 miles away. They are telling us what kind of ship or receiver are we dealing with. And in this case, we're dealing with first come, first serve. We can pick up from 7 to 12. We can deliver from 12 to 2. We can use wind or reefer. It has to be 53 feet. They have a price and they even calculate for you rate per mile. $1.36, guys. Well, golden load. Golden load for whom? Desperate dispatchers and carriers who brand new in the business. But let's see. They are telling us it's going to be 15,000 on the weight. It's going to be 734 miles loaded. Remember, and 18 miles or 12 miles deadhead. They are telling us who is going to be actually, and that's what I like about Coyote. So I do agree with the brand because at least I know who I am dealing with. So they are giving you the name of shipper and receiver. And look at this. You can even see the rating and they have one rating. Why? Why do they have only one rating? Maybe because people don't ship that much from that UP Proviso Diesel Express warehouse and they have two ratings for delivery. Also five stars, not much going on. They also tell you it's going to be no touch to the driver, so no driver assist, right? And they are telling you that commodity is going to be MISC, miscellaneous. That means that different types of dry goods And they even have you the map. You can start bidding. You can bid on this load. But of course, we're not bidding because this is nonsense. But what did we saw right now? Well, we saw the load board for Coyote. Hopefully, guys, it's almost like being in my class. For one hour, I've been teaching you how to get set up wire link. So now you know you don't have to be afraid. You just need to have information about your carrier, know their tax ID, their address, their email, know what type of equipment do they have, understand coverages that they have, who is their insurance agent, which policies do they have, who is their factory, making sure that you have updated notice of assignment, uh, certificate of insurance, and that's it. It's going to be boom, 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 done, right? So set up process. It's not a brain surgery. You don't have to go to school. You don't have to be an attorney to actually do setup because I guess what? Even if you are an attorney who looks at that uh, broker carrier agreement between me and TQL and says, well, I don't like this. It doesn't make sense. Oh no, I would take this out. I want to, to not agree to this. Even if you're an attorney and you decide to change that broker carrier agreement on your terms as a carrier, do you think TQL or Coyote or CH Robinson 
or anyone gonna carry a Molo or Pepsi, they're gonna say goodbye. If you do not want to agree to our terms, wow, you don't have to set up. This is actually your willingness to work with us on our terms. And let me be honest with you. That's why trucking is challenging industry because a lot of times those broker carriers agreements, of course, who do they protect? Do they think they protect carrier? No, they don't. They protect broker and hopefully their customer. So that's why it's kind of one-sided relationship there. And a lot of times this is unfair. But you are big kids and you know what you are dealing with, right? Trucking is not fair. And you need to get used to this. Trucking is not for soft personalities. Trucking is about making decisions, negotiating, sticking to your numbers, understanding when to go out of the business, maybe file the bankruptcy and say goodbye, I try, I did not make it, maybe learn, improve, adjust, change how you run your operation. Maybe sometimes it's better to go back on the truck and be a driver than be an owner of the company. Of the company. Sometimes this is a lots and lots of tough decisions which you guys might not like to do. But the trucking is that industry, right? It's totally different industry. And I can tell you from my own experience, since I've been running other businesses and still running other businesses, trucking is totally different animal. And believe me, that animal, which is not like a little cat, which you can just kind of go and pet and it's going to meow back. No, trucking is that animal. When you do not understand what you're doing, it's going to eat you alive, right? Okay, so let's see what else we learned today. We finished that initial setup. We might give the updates for what? Once a year for new certificate of insurance. When we renew our policy, hopefully you just renew once a year. If you do it more often, you're probably going to be out of the business anyway because no insurance is going to is gonna cover you after a few changes right nobody wants to have unstable business or people who come to them for one month make the claims and then live somewhere else so don't do that you might change your notice of assignment if you decide to go to other factory and company pay attention to the terms contracts and giving the notice right so we call that buyout process so notice of assignment what else of course we need to update our w9 every year in the beginning of the year if you're changing something maybe you are adding coverage well you will update what those four uh websites right their dat onboarding highway my uh, carrier setup the assure assist rmis if something changes let's say you added the reefer breakdown whose job is this to update that certificate holder you as a dispatcher you as a owner of the trucking company right so i don't know if i see any questions if not guys we're gonna be done because this is a beautiful thursday we still have the friday to manage right tomorrow in trucking looking forward on seeing my students on saturday for second dispatch class and of course my safety third class on sunday let's see um so, Brian is asking, how can I become more efficient in keeping tracks of who I've called and who I have emailed? At times, I feel a little unorganized. Well, we probably, guys, um, probably we need to talk to those people who did the extension, right? So, it's easier. You can email now from any load board, right? And it's called Connect. So, maybe we're going to invite them. This is also third party, which is make it easier for you. When you're on a load board, you can just click and you can pre-make the email. So it says, for example, uh, Brian Transportation he would like to get more details on this load. And you can actually do your own tablet. So this way you click and email is sent right away. It's easier. Well, you should probably use a TMS, but usually on load boards, when you click on it and you open for details, 
it's already shown you that you call those people or you can market, right? If you know that some brokers you do not work, for example, DAT, it gives you option to do what? To block that brokers. If you know that they are not approved by your factoring and this is the only carrier you work with, I would just block some of them so you don't get confused because sometimes you can be busy or maybe you skip that mandatory step to double check, right? So that's a way to keep organized. Um, I don't know. A lot of TMS help you to get organized a little. Um, I don't know, little apps. For me personally, I guess you just have to learn how to remember what you're doing today, right? I don't want you to remember all the loads, but it's pretty easy to keep track. Maybe the little notepads, right? I have them all the time. If something I just did and I want to make sure I put, okay, this was a load, this was a guy, and I put the sticker right in front of my screens. But remember, you need to take them off after the day is over because you're going to get confused because you're going to see five different mics. And if you did not put exactly what is this mic, for example, look at this note. I have Love 100. What does this note refer to? Well, only me remembering that this referred for the coupon that I was giving for our February class, right? So this is gone now. So look at me. Even I have to stay organized. That should be in the garbage already for three days, but it was still on my desk. I don't know. Um, just just try to use some um, some systems. Just try to kind of train yourself to remember stuff. And how do we train? By writing down things, notes. But never, never start writing while you're talking to the broker because you're going to get distracted and you're going to forget to ask valuable information. Thank you, Brian, for being active today. Well, what is this? Um, This is a question from somebody, Mr. Nasa360. Hi, Alex. I appreciate if you tell about load... Load out for power only. My carrier stuck in Edinburgh, Texas, and I'm not getting any good loads, just getting load out. Well, because you are in an area where Edinburgh, Texas, well, this is your only way to probably get out. Because if you cannot get power only, what does it mean load out trailer? Well, that you're going to take it. In this case, you need to have inter-exchange policy, right? Your carrier has to have inter-exchange policy and you need to make sure that you take the trailer but pay attention don't just take any trailer you need to end up somewhere in the area where you're gonna find that final power only because if you are taking loadout trailer from that area and you need to bring that trailer to another dead area this is another suicidal mission for the next seven days usually they give them for you the trailer that you can use it can be drive and a reefer. Remember, you cannot take reefer loads if you don't have reefer breakdown. And it's going to be harder for you to find the loads because of what? Weight rest restrictions, double uh, stacking and all that. So usually just take drive in. But make sure that where you need to bring the trailer, this would be a good area to your power only, right? Take it to Indianapolis area, take it to Chicago, take it to Ohio, take it to, I don't know, Dallas, take it to the big mega city where we have power only loads, right? I don't know if you're working with Amazon, if you're working with a GB Hunt or you're working with a Schneider or just Coyote power only, well, make sure you are bringing the trailer to the big hub because if you don't do that, you're going to end up seven days later, you're going to end up in the same situation. You're going to sit in an area where you cannot find power only, right? Oh my God, guys, we've been already going for our 13 minutes. And you know what? Honestly, I told today my kids, I am just going to do 10 minutes short video. Well, now it works with me. Okay, uh, I have the same problem at the times. Okay, hopefully I help you out a little bit. Okay, do you offer refresher classes? No, not really. I did not offer that. But here is a new thing that we are actually having. And we added, remember, I promise everybody, especially for the drivers on the road, that I will add the crash webinar 
for two days. So here you go, guys. Let me show you. And I actually set the date. So it's going to be uh, March 23rd and 24th. So it's going to be Saturday and Sunday. Each class is going to be four hours. So this is a basic knowledge for people who would like to become dispatchers. We're going to work on setting up with brokers, basics of load boards, basic negotiations, and basics of equipment. There's going to be no homework. There's going to be PDFs to prepare for the class because it's a crash course. This is good for people who, for example, drivers, and they want to know how the site works and they're not sure. This is for people who may be debating, is dispatching good for them? So this would be a good uh, class to start. And after this, if you decide to continue with regular class, you actually can continue with April and we would deduct that money from the cost of our pro dispatching. Because sometimes people don't really want to go spend thousand dollars because they're not sure or their schedule is not working. So this would be a good, good basic um, crash course. And this is the first time I am doing this. And hopefully for some people, it's going to be working out because I have a lot of followers, especially on TikTok, who've been asking me for just a basic course, but still not pre-recorded. So we'll see. We'll see how it works, right? Um, you are really a godsend. I truly appreciate the work that you have put on. You helped so many, please, and blessings. Well, thank you so much. As I told you, I'm giving you education and you're giving me back the support. So we all work together. And I do believe in good and bad. And if you do the good things, the good things come to you. But the main reason I am doing this because this industry needs more education on all the levels for dispatchers, for safety managers, for future carriers, and only with education, only with improving our skills, only with building that logical system in your head, we can all improve this industry. And of course, remember, that is our mission, right? What are we doing? We are changing trucking for the better. For people who brand new to us, make sure that you find us on our website you can subscribe guys we do not send a bunch of promotions but you can be on top of maybe upcoming uh, lives or new courses that we offer and of course we do appreciate you subscribing because believe it or not we have people who watch and 60 percent of you do not subscribe and i am just amazed because i see the views and you guys still not subscribe. So this is actually kind of kind of thank you back to me for sitting here and spending my time and sharing my knowledge. So again, Mr. Nasa says, lots of love. You explain so well. Any other questions? If not, we actually going to be done for today. For my students, please make sure you rewatch who is in class now, who was in previous class, because this hopefully is going to help you. And yes, look at this. Kelly is so overexcited. Okay, let's make her day. She wanted to look into Best Bay, uh, Best Bay Logistics. Okay, let's go really quick, because I want to make sure that Kelly is going to be a superstar. So, Kelly Turner, hopefully she subscribed to our channel, right? And hopefully now she's going to be posting uh, questions under the videos that I have. Let's see. To get uh, initial setup with Best Bay Logistics, well, what do they want? Of course, Active MC, W9. They need to make sure that you complete carrier profile. Oh, my God. You know what? I did not share that. I did not share the screen. Sorry, Kelly. I got so excited. I got so excited about making you a star that I forgot to share the screen. So my bad. Forgive me. Again, they need you to accept the agreement. They need to make sure that you provide certificate of insurance from the agent. They need 100,000 cargo coverage. 
1 million after coverage, general liability. And look at this. If you are a broker, your rating has to be A plus or better if you have AM best rating. And of course, if you are with RMIS, then they don't need a copy of your insurance because this is a part of RMIS onboarding services. They do verify that information. And you need to make sure you have active common or contract authority. Safety rating must be satisfactory or none. And look at this. Wow, wow, wow. Can we work with this broker? Not really. You have to be in business for 365 days. So here you go. Make another note. To set up with Best Bay Logistics, you have to be in business for one year. So, so far, Pepsi is not on the list. Best Bay Logistics is not on the list. Coyote, 30 days. C. Robinson, you have to be one day in a business. RxO, it's 90 days. Molo, you can work with them as long as you have all requirements, right? So, look at this. We are learning, learning, and learning. Okay. Adele is asking, when will you realize the choice? What choice? Kind of a little bit confusing by that question. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for the love. Thanks for subscribing. You can also support our mission for free education. If you've been watching us last week, we gave seven free classes and we have few students who already started the class and some of you will be starting in april one of the winners she was actually the member for one year and three months and yes she's spending three dollars 99 cents a month and she's helping us to change tracking for the better and look at this universe gave back to her she won safety and compliance class so now she's getting class which is worth thousand fifty dollars and of course she's gonna get lots and lots of knowledge so support our support our uh, mission well we're not choosing the winners because we did that last week so you miss you miss the winners we're probably gonna do it maybe for summer classes but you need to complete and be added right so if you ever want to be considered in another giveaway, you still have to follow the rules, right? 25 likes on all the platforms, 25 comments. You have to subscribe and you have to send your proof. I still gonna do it, why? Because I'm truly want to change tracking for the better. So giving the free education for people who are serious, it's not a big deal for me. Because if I'm teaching 20 people, if I'm teaching 40 people, if I'm teaching 80 people, I still spend the same time of energy. If I'm teaching one person, I still give the same opportunity to everyone. So thank you for actually helping me to stay on my mission because every comment, every like, every share, every sign up shows me that I'm doing a good job. And actually, I'm going to get emotional. Guys, you don't even understand. When you guys give reviews after the classes, when you say thank you to me, when uh, we have the last practice, this is, this is the best reward I can get as an instructor. And it just melts my heart. And the best part for me is to see the improvement of my students, to see how you guys get confident, how you understand the logical process. And of course, hopefully, hopefully you're going to keep that values and that um, knowledge due, due, during your achievements. And of course, you have to be better. You have to be, be better than me because the, the teacher is good. But you know what makes me a great teacher? If my students actually become better than me. And hopefully all of you are going to be better than me. That you're going to be pro-pro dispatchers. And hopefully one day you're going to say, you know what? That sassy girl, that Ukrainian stubborn lady, she actually told me that I can do it. And actually I did it. And we're going to finish on that note. And hopefully to see you soon, guys. Learn and never stop learning.